What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another interview edition of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman, and I have with me the co-founder of Horizon, a privacy ecosystem, and its native cryptocurrency, Zen, Rob Viglione. How are you doing? Awesome, Nick. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, it's been a little bit since we've been here together. So before we get started, yeah. make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions about Horizon for me or Rob, throw it in the comment section below. We'll try to get to those as we can. So for those who have not seen an interview with me or you or don't even know what Horizon is, mm -hmm. can you just give a brief overview of what you guys are doing, what the plan is, and why you need a cryptocurrency at all? No, totally. I mean, we started off as a cryptocurrency, so as a privacy-oriented cryptocurrency. And the motivation there was to grab uh, you know, zero-knowledge libraries so that we can do some really cool things on the privacy side, really for data, and then tackling kind of enterprise marketplaces. So we started off as a privacy coin, and we're you know, actually, it's a very exciting moment for the project because we're within a few months of actually releasing the alpha of our big platform system. Um, so that's, it, it's been a long time in coming. Actually, we were kind of measuring um, this whole experience. It's been about a year from R&D sketching architecture to being able to deliver an alpha. Um, it's been a huge slog and also building the team to actually make that possible. Um, so what we're all about is ultimately we're creating a massively scalable blockchain ecosystem that I think just from an architectural perspective offers something the marketplace, some, it offers the marketplace something innovative and interesting in the sense that we have a very robust main chain that's very Bitcoin-like with added privacy and we've modified the consensus mechanisms as well to make them a little bit more resistant to different types of attacks, like 51% attacks. Uh, we've layered some network level security features in there. But really the, the magic of what we're doing or the secret sauce is our sidechain system. So it's really like a, a hub and spoke architecture where you have this very robust uh, main chain and then you have application specific and completely generalizable, configurable sidechains. Awesome. Um, so this is, this to me is the most exciting thing and it's a big innovation. Um, there are, uh, I think, something like uh, a little over a dozen projects, maybe less than 20 projects in the market that are talking about sidechains and working on different types of sidechain technology. Ours is a completely unfederated architecture in the sense that you don't have to rely on trusted nodes or trusted parties in any, for, uh, to adjudicate transactions. And we have a purely decentralized system that you just trust the math instead of trusting human beings. So it's, it can scale hugely. Um, and we could talk about some of the, the details there, but it's, it's a really exciting time for the project because we're right on the cusp of it. And we have some really significant milestones we've hit in the development process. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, we'll hit on yeah. side chains here a little bit later in the interview. And also that's what kind of caught my eye. Going back to what you're saying, what Horizon is, is you know there is Monero, there is Zcash, which is a privacy coin, mm -hmm. which Zen originally was, but really yeah. you're creating an entire ecosystem to actually make this more usable for the average user or those who are in need of more privacy features via be the chat functions and some of the other things you're coming out with also you are more are less susceptible to 51 percent attacks since you do have both proof of work and you do have a node structure so secure mm -hmm. node and super node which is obviously very interesting to those who believe in the project want to be kind of speculative on the project protect the network and earn the zen for that work they're doing so pretty exciting absolutely yeah and a lot of people that watch the youtube show know how much i am about the ROI of, of staking coins and why to get involved and what you're really doing behind this yeah. is very important to this ecosystem. No, honestly, I think ma the, mass, the whole masternode uh, staking system is a new asset class, in my opinion. It's a, it's a new emerging asset class. Maybe it's not mature enough to call it that, uh, but it's really interesting from an investment perspective. Yeah, and I think, I think traditional markets or institutions are starting to look at it that way. You can yeah. get kind of a residual income, hold the underlying as a speculative asset, and then maybe sell yeah. off or diversify the earned uh, ROI right. off of that in the future yeah. as well. You just well, want to make sure you're, you're staking with a very serious project and not one that's going to go away with all of your stake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We try to tell people that, you know, the highest ROI isn't always the best yeah. because if it's exactly. an exit scam or there's no liquidity, yeah. then that ROI means nothing. You really need to get behind projects that you believe in, have active development team, yeah. have liquidity if that's what you choose to do and yeah. so forth. So last time we did talk, we talked a lot about Sphere and this is your new, uh, Sphere by, by Horizon Wallet, but I keep seeing different articles or posts about how it's much more than a wallet. Can you kind of yeah. explain what you mean by that and why should we be using that rather than some of the other options such as your desktop wallet or even people who leave it on an exchange for, for example? Right. Well, first of all, it, it is an awesome wallet. <laughs> so first of all, it, it's a really awesome wallet. It's slick. It, it has really good features in there for, you know, designed for the user experience, having that in mind. 
which is something that the industry hasn't done all that great of a job of in the last decade or so. Uh, but I, I do think that it's a nice step in the right direction of you know, better user experience. Now, to, you know, to be frank, it's not all that much more of a wallet right now, but the purpose of it and why we call it an app is because um, it's actually going to be the portal for our sidechain system. Uh, so that's really where it, it gets its turbocharge is once, once the sidechain system goes live, um, this will be our uh, application to be able to manage your sidechains and to be able to conduct uh, transactions with sidechains. Okay. Also with that, in order to effectively use some of the products that are already released and are going to be released in the future, is that all going to be usable through the Sphere wallet or platform? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, not to be too speculative, but there is a very interesting uh, kind of design path we, we have for Sphere. Um, so ultimately, we want this to be not just a portal into the sidechain ecosystem, but a portal into the Horizon ecosystem. Um, you know, once we have, we're actually building out a competitive marketplace for running sidechains on the node side. So you can already look at secure super node statistics in, in uh, the Sphere wallet. Um, you can do messaging in the Sphere wallet now. And as we build out different applications, this would be our, uh, very likely, our, you know, application of choice to be able to consolidate and view the kind of, uh, app uh, ecosystem. Now, we've already kind of brought it up a little bit, but sidechain seems to kind of be the catchphrase for a few projects, or maybe scalable sidechain solutions is another catchphrase going around in the ecosystem a little bit. Mm -hmm. Can you go a little deeper into the progress Horizon is making? And for those who don't really know, what are sidechains and why does it even benefit Horizon? Why should they even be yeah. excited for sidechain solutions moving forward? Right. Well, sidechains are absolutely critical, in my opinion, because if we are going to scale out these blockchain uh, or you know, blockchain-like networks, uh, we don't want to do everything through a single, a single chain. Um, because there are some examples out there, we throw out a silly example like CryptoKitties. You would not want to do CryptoKitties on your main chain. And you know, imagine, it, juxtapose, you have a very serious enterprise that's trying to do some very, very important economic activities or functions on your blockchain. And then you have a game. Um, and, and the game, it's kind of a silly game, but it's super fun, it goes viral. And that game's transactions clog up the chain, so then the very serious business all of a sudden has a spike in transaction fees or latencies. You know, it can't, maybe transactions are effectively like, you know, denied from being executed. So it, the, the much more, uh, I think, scalable architecture is one where you want to do application or function specific, um, basically blockchains. We call them side chains because they're fully functioning blockchains, they're fully configurable, you can write your own consensus rules, you can write your own transaction types and functions, but they conform to uh, our sidechain SDK or just that kind of main chain to sidechain interface. And as long as they conform to that, they can leverage our 30,000 plus, you know, roughly, uh, or I guess we're a little under 30,000 uh, full nodes right now uh, that are compensated on our secure node and super node network. Leverage those, have them run your system, have them run your sidechain, and then they can also adjudicate um, the fact of whether or not consensus rules on your sidechain have been met. And they do this in a zero knowledge way, at least with our architecture, is you can configure your sidechain to do whatever it wants or you want it to do. And you design a proving circuit or proving system so that the output of that proving system is a circuit which has a Boolean output of true or false, were consensus rules on your sidechain net? Were there any double spends, if that's your, your consensus rule that you want, you care about? Were there any violations of immutability on, da on data that you might have put on your, on your chain and so forth? And the main chain can do this uh, without knowing what those rules are specifically. They just have to, happen to know that the interface between the sidechain and the main chain and the rules of that interface have been met. And then this provides massive security. So I like to liken it to the early days of networking where you had you know, um, every business started saying, well, this networking thing is very interesting. Everyone's talking about it. We need to network our, the divisions in our company and we'll create this intranet. And then they started realizing very quickly, well, it's actually much more useful for us to plug into the public intranet. So that's what we bring to the table is we're creating an environment where businesses, application developers, anyone that's interested in experimenting with blockchain technology can do it in, on their own terms it, with their own private or semi-private or even public side chain and connect that to our main chain and leverage all the security characteristics and the infrastructure economies of scale that you get with the public infrastructure. So it's a really exciting system. I think it's absolutely necessary for real scalability. Yeah, a couple things there. First of all, we already saw what happened when there wasn't side chains with CryptoKitties. Ethereum got bogged down, fees went through yeah. the roof and you even had projects to leave Ethereum yep. to go to Ethereum Classic, Neo and others 
due yeah. to the, the scaling issues. Right. So that really dampened Ethereum's growth, et cetera. I know they're working on that. Yeah. Also with that, from a more, say, investor or if you're a node holder, when these side chains are created, mm -hmm. is there going to be passed through onto maybe some extra rewards to node holders since they are going to be actually verifying not only Horizons Network, but also all these new side chains or commerce Absolutely. So Nick, you, you, come on board. Yeah, you've been with us for a while. You know, we're all about incentive compatibility and sustainable, sustainable economics. So you absolutely have to. If you want people to do something, you have to pay them for it. Uh, and if you want them to keep doing it, you have to keep paying them for it. So we're designing a system to be incentive compatible across all stakeholders on it. So if you're an application developer and you want to experiment with a blockchain, do it with us because if you do it, you actually will have a fee capture on the, the side chain to main chain uh, transactions that fee capture would also be relevant to node operators. So if you're a node and you wanna act, act as a certifying node for a particular sidechain or say a thousand sidechains, you can do that. And because of that extra work you're doing, you can part, participate in the, the transaction split. So absolutely. And I think this is what will make the, the system sustainable and grow. Now, what would make somebody wanna build or use your platform versus say in Ethereum and EOS and NEO and Ethereum Classic? There is a lot of competition in the protocol yeah. sector, if that's what I want to call it. Um, I know you guys are also a privacy ecosystem, have your own privacy yeah. coin, but then why do people want to build on top of Horizon? No, totally, and, and that's an excellent question. And first of all, I'll caveat this in a very above the line kind of way, that there are geniuses working on all of these protocols. Uh, so I, I'm a huge fan of all of them actually, or maybe I, I should say all of them, but many of them I'm a huge fan of, and I love the innovation that's going on. We take the innovation to a different set of parameters, a different architecture type, we have a different team doing things. And I think that what the innovation we're bringing to the market is the first fully unfederated system. So it's one that solves a particular business problem where if you're in an environment where you have, uh, say, uh, a whole bunch of parties across whatever barriers you want them to be, maybe they're barriers of the firm, maybe they're geographic barriers, political barriers, jurisdictional barriers, and you don't trust necessarily everyone across these barriers, we have a very nice, elegant architecture where you can play with these people without understanding or without having to trust them. And of course, this is the promise of blockchain to begin with, but we're doing it in a way that's extremely scalable where you get a unique, uh, well, a modified, basically, Ouroboros Prowse consensus framework on a side chain. So you have massive scalability, it's academically validated, and then it still plugs back into our, our uh, you know, Horizon main chain with the, the you know, in, intense security that you get of having really the, the industry's largest node architecture or node network, right? So there's some really just pragmatic reasons, but then we want the, um, you know, many more reasons to use our, our tool. So we're actually creating a very nice software developer toolkit. So it'll be easy to, to deploy your blockchain. We have really good economic incentives to deploy it. We'll have good tools to deploy it. Um, so really, I, I'm very bullish on the industry as a whole, but I think our project is going in a unique direction that should be very interesting for a lot of people in the marketplace. Yeah, it's been really interesting to see yeah. your growth, not only the industry growth, but Horizon in specific, because you guys did go just from a crypto to mm -hmm. the promise of the node network, which is now here. Now the promise yeah. of side chains in the ecosystem that we can actually use yeah. these cryptos. You know, so close. Is speculating yeah. Yeah. or trading or, <laughs> hey, I owe my buddy for a movie ticket, so I'll pay him in Zen or Bitcoin yeah. or Rapids or whatever. Yeah. But it'll be nice to use it for an actual pro product or platform as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's hard to, to go deep into Horizon in 30 minutes or whatever we do this for, but I would recommend for people who want to learn more to also watch the previous interviews that me and Rob have done. But I know you guys are also launching or, in the, or have already just recently launched Horizon Academy. Can you explain a little bit about what that is and yeah. how people can really go from zero to 100 on everything that Horizon's about? Totally. So this industry has exploded in the last 10 years, for sure. It's exploded to the point where we even have the president of the United States talking about, uh, you know, Bitcoin. So it's exploded. It's here to stay. All right. But still, how many people actually you know, own Bitcoin, own a cryptocurrency? And how many people of that small subset of, of humanity actually use it for anything? Much smaller, much smaller point. So what I think is we have a communication and an education problem. This is where Horizon Academy comes in. So we, we've actually designed um, a basic intermediary and advanced courses for people that are interested in blockchain technology and then also want to learn something about Horizon specifically. But we designed it to really be an entry point for if you want to learn about Bitcoin, you want to learn the basics of blockchain, and you want to learn how to do basic security on these things because it is, it is a little scary. You know, it, it's liberating to own your private keys. It's like having your, your bank account in your home or in your wallet. 
liberating, but it's also a little scary and you can screw up. So there's a lot of education that I think we have to do as an industry. So we want to be part of that. We're kind of, this is like our, our social good, you know, good, uh, you know, uh, opportunity here to educate people. And of course we, we educate them on horizon as well, if they're interested. And then we, we have them download our, our tools, our apps and get them to use them. You know, it's, it's a very fun experience. Now where we're, we're taking this next is actually uh, a sort of Horizon coding, code academy. So uh, really focusing on developing a, a developer ecosystem and really pushing hard on that developer ecosystem. So uh, we have a lot more details and I probably don't want to spill the beans too much on it, but it is a call to action though for open source developers. Is, um, here's my beef with open source development and just this industry in general. So I, it was awesome. Satoshi releasing Bitcoin was awesome. A huge breakthrough for humanity with this technology. And we had some really, really talented people contribute to the technology, but it's not sustainable or realistic to think that you're gonna have dozens or hundreds of serious projects and get open source developers all over the world to just voluntarily contribute their time and their resources mm -hmm. and start building your system for free. So I, I think, and not just for free, but I mean, just to come in and say, well, hey, come take a look at what we're doing and figure out how you can help. I think that that's a very defeating strategy and not sustainable. So what we're doing is curating development opportunities and doing it in a, a social game, gamified way where we, we basically carve out, you know, say initially non-critical path type of tasks or entire projects uh, that we want to see done. We curate the process where we you know, develop the protocol specs of what we're looking for. And we have a nice ecosystem where a new developer or a seasoned developer can come in and start participating. And we show them exactly how to participate and we guide them throughout the process. And then those that are, you know, kind of basically like in a gamified environment who do the best, they can kind of turn around and start mentoring other people and gain additional credits by mentoring other, other coders and then coming up with the ideas, doing the testing, doing the code review and really have this nice complex dynamic ecosystem that I think is going to be very attractive to, for developers in particular one where we release the sidechain SDK because that's going to be a turbocharged toolkit for developers to take and run with. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, the, we're already seeing other industry leaders trying to educate beginners as well with like Coinbase, uh, what do they got? Coinbase Learn or whatever we can learn about certain projects or Bitcoin or private keys. And I think that's really good that you guys are doing that. Also, you'll be on the forefront of people's minds. If you kind of teach them, get them entry, and then you also mentor it in Horizon. I think the developer thing is most interesting because yeah. I think, first of all, it's great for the entire industry. If you teach them a little something, maybe they do their own project. They go start building on another open source project. Yeah. Like you said, if there is some standouts or some higher level developers or people that are catching on more, maybe Horizon will be first there to kind of cherry pick some of these developers, help grow your side chains and your project moving forward yeah. as well. No, that's exactly right. And you know, one thing that really, uh, yeah, I was watching an interview with Peter Schiff <laughs> and uh, you're kind of bashing Bitcoin the other day. And um, the, the counterpoint was, well, Bitcoin's awesome because it's actually a, a truly decentralized protocol that no one governs, no one's in charge of. So, you know, you know, right now you have us as a team building this stuff out. We have the Zen Blockchain Foundation, the nonprofit, and now we have Horizon Labs, a for-profit. So you have two entities building out this ecosystem. It's not enough. And we need to move away from relying on specific people and really open it up to more people participating a decentralized further. So we do take this seriously. And I know that over the last two years, it doesn't look like we've been all that decentralized, but we, we've been very methodical about decentralizing certain segments of our ecosystem, like our node network. Now we have a massive node network, the, the biggest in the industry. So we, we're true to our word on decentralizing that. Next up, once we have the sidechain SDK, which decentralizes development on the ecosystem, because now people can actually just take the developer toolkit and start building rather than relying on us as a team. Um, but we want to decentralize our treasury system, decentralize the resource pool, right? Decentralize the tracking and payment system for the node system, right? So there's so much more that we still have to decentralize. We're very committed to it. I think the industry as a whole should probably be committed to it. Uh, so it, it's pretty exciting. But part of this education process and opening up our open source ecosystem initially to a curated, like gamified environment to get people in, but then ultimately to go beyond that is critical. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as using Zen or trading Zen, are there any new integrations or partnerships that you've recently created or maybe that you're in the works of creating that kind of have you excited uh, for the future of your community? Totally. So we, we have a ton of them, actually. So we, we have a very, very, we, we have a BD genius, Roland Stone, our, our VP of business development is awesome. Really, he, he and his team have just are always uh, surprising me in a very positive way. But they, they have a huge list of integrations from exchanges to point of sale services. 
Um, you know, to wallets. Really, the goal of the last two years was to get Zen out there in, in new marketplaces, geographically diversified marketplaces. And right now, we're on something like over three dozen exchanges. We have, I think, about a dozen new exchange listings to meant to talk about in the next live stream that we're doing. So, um, guys, come come join that one. That'll be the the first Wednesday of every month we do our live streams. Uh, and by the way, we're, we're probably at least I'm advocating we change that schedule. What I want to do is actually we do team meetings every week where you know the team thinks I want to open these up to the public. Um, I want to be more transparent. So I want to have open weekly team meetings. So they'll be more raw, but more genuine at the same time, not as curated. And then we'll do even more curated and even more methodical, I think quarterly reviews. So we'll do weekly, weekly raw team calls and then uh, very rigorous quarterly reviews. So, so that's it. Uh, I, I probably shouldn't mention the specific integrations or listings that we have, but yes, we're, we're very much uh, very active on that. But the whole point of it is to make Zen easier to obtain and then use. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. I think I agree with you on doing the mm -hmm. kind of open weekly calls because then that kind of keeps things fresh. People can mm -hmm. grasp more if every week there's one announcement versus once a month where there's five things going on and this event happened and it kind of all right. gets, it all kind of gets lost. You know, you yeah. can kind of just mute it. People can't really talk, but they can listen in. And then yep. quarterly is more like what traditional companies do now where you yep. have quarter, quarterly reports where you really do higher yep. level what's really important. Yeah, and actually we, we do internal quarterly uh, program reviews, so QPMRs, and they're, they're fantastic. And even from my perspective, so the team does so much, I know all the time everything that's going on. So for me, it's really good to see, like we do basically like quad chart formats where you can see like description of, of the project, uh, you can see risk levels of the projects, you can see kind of opportunities, um, you know, milestones, actually a project schedule. Uh, and you can see where we are in the schedule relative to milestones and all that. So it's, it's very professional. And what I'd like to do is actually open this up to the public. So this was the idea of the quarterly reviews because it is a ton of work to do. Um, so we're not going to do this every month, for sure not. But I figured to compensate, overcompensate in the other direction, let's open up our weekly calls. You know, let's have that genuine raw experience of see how a crypto team actually operates in the trenches. This is not a curated environment. You can see what we're working on, how we're working on it. And I think this is the ultimate kind of transparency that we need. That's very interesting. So, I mean, is there anything I missed pertaining to Horizon? And then I kind of just want to ask a couple just crypto related questions about market conditions, et cetera. But is there anything, you know, important that you want to say about Horizon, something exciting, something we may have missed? Yeah, no, totally. So uh, one thing that we should probably bring up is, and I mentioned it, we actually launched a for-profit company and raised some venture capital. It, it was around led by Digital Currency Group, DCG. Uh, and we also had Liberty City Ventures. So it, it's uh, a fund run by Emil Woods, who's you know, behind also ItBit Paxos. So really nice power team uh, behind a seed round. And really the purpose of Horizon Labs is to turbocharge the commercial applications, um, you know, basically to curate these uh, basically business relationships that we've had in the pipeline already, but to really turbocharge them and bring them to market with the sidechain. So you can see the process here strategically is bring sidechain technology to market, and then, you know, in the background, simultaneously, we've actually been curating these um, very, very nice high profile business, uh, you know, applications or, you know, so that's the whole point of Horizon Labs is to, well, we've diversified our funding sources. So we're not fully reliant on the price of Zen. Uh, thank God, because the markets have been ridiculously volatile and we can talk about that. But it's nice to have some USD in a bank account. It's really nice for stability and to be able to build out developer teams. So what we've been doing is actually... Um, I'm really proud of our team building exercises. And I think it, it, as far as this industry goes, we are top notch on the team building stuff. We have an awesome R&D engineering team out of Milan. Uh, we're building a product engineering team in Tel Aviv. And we're building a big product engineering headquarters in, well, we're targeting Austin, Texas. Uh, but we're, we want to build a big US presence. So it's really nice to do this. We raised some money and now we're in basically a gung-ho uh, or full steam ahead on hiring. That's really exciting. Yeah, I know you guys have been picking up some new people here and there from all, you know, whether it's for social media purposes, development purposes, whatever it may be. And I also yeah. think it's very underrated that, uh, you know, we're talking about institutions coming into the marketplace. And I don't want to make this a discussion mm -hmm. about Zen price or any other price, sure. but that's just the nature of the beast. And Zen has actually been picked up by Grayscale and now Digital Currency Group, which are kind of leaders for kind of merging both traditional finance and the crypto finance. So, I know Horizon and some of these other ones, you know, they're not the, the hype cycles of crypto, Twitter, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I think people need to open their eyes and realize yeah. usability isn't going to be coming from 
some dog on crypto Twitter. It's going to be coming, <laughs> uh, you know, real companies, real businesses that have real user bases. Exactly. Using some of these ecosystems down the line. Yep. So I think that's pretty yeah. exciting as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. And so to piggyback on that and actually to fill in another gap I forgot was uh, something I'm really proud of is there's a, uh, something called a fundamental crypto asset score. So if you go to coinmarketcap.com mm -hmm. uh, and you look at ratings for projects, we actually, we've actually been an A rating for a while, but it was listed as an F initially. And then it was listed as a C because we weren't sharing a lot of the private repository activity that we were doing. Right. And we weren't sharing in the right format um, chain data, so actual usage of our blockchain. Um, so we talked to um, the, the company Flipside Crypto that actually runs that, that rating service. Basically, it's like the Moody's or Standard & Poor's of our industry. Uh, and we found out what they actually look at, look at, and we gave them that information. And right away, we jumped up to an A rating. So if you look at it, and I think this is why we've been fortunate to have such great partners like DCG and Grayscale is because they took the time to do, do the actual due diligence on us as a team and a project. And they saw before, you know, the, the FCAS score, they saw before, you know, the market really, that we have a very serious project. We're doing some very, very important, you know, innovative stuff. And we also have the commercial applications we're working on. So I think that now I'm really proud is reflected in our, our FCAS score. Now we're, we're finally in A and I, I believe that we're gonna be significantly higher rated um, just from the score perspective, uh, once we actually go to market with our sidechain technology. That's really, that's cool. I'll have to take a look at that. I haven't yeah. seen that, uh, that whole rating scale. Yeah. How's uh, Charles Hassington and Cardano doing? When's Shelly going to be launched? Is it going to be done? <laughs> <laughs> so I can't answer that, but Charles, <laughs> Charles is great. I, I love how Charles is so active on uh, social media. Yeah. He really stays plugged in with the community. This is something that I've realized as well is sometimes you can get so heads down in the trenches and working that you forget to communicate with the community. And I'm totally guilty of this. So what I've done actually is I plugged into my calendar, you know, different slots throughout the day, check in on, on our social media channels, engage the community, see what, what they're up to and, you know, share what we're up to. So right. Charles does an awesome job at that. Yeah. He's always doing the AMAs or yeah. no, he, he's scenes on vacation yeah. or whatever. <laughs> he's a total, total leader in the industry in that, in that respect, in many respects, but that in particular. That's awesome. And Horizon is still working with IOHK currently or? Totally, yeah. So actually um, something we haven't been very public about is, um, uh, so Alberto Garofalo, our chief architect, is, is just a genius anyway with this stuff. And he's, he's invented this, I, I think, ingenious, innovative sidechain or system. And right now um, we're working with uh, actually our favorite IOHK team. So those researchers out of Ukraine, um, uh, called Team Veritas from uh, IOHK. So if you go to the IOHK team page and look for Team Veritas, that's the team we work with. And they're right now mathematically formalizing the model that we've created and they're verifying the model and they're doing like math proofs, they're stress testing it. Uh, love working with those guys. They've prototyped stuff with us in the past. We have an awesome working relationship. Now let's talk a little bit about crypto in general. Obviously, you know, Bitcoin has been doing pretty well, 3X off the lows. Mm -hmm. Altcoins kind of following, but really they're struggling as well. So last time we talked, Horizon did increase treasury from the, from the black reward from 10% to 20%. Yep. Now, how is things still going with the current Zen price? Since now you have an influx of US dollars from Digital Currency Group, yep. are you thinking about rolling that back? Are you guys going to need to increase that? Are you going to pass that on to, to nodes in the future? I mean, have you guys thought about that at all? As yeah, the so I, this, is, this is a really interesting philosophical question, actually. Uh, not, not to go too, too deep into the philosophy here, but if you think from, from a theoretical perspective, I, I fundamentally believe that the marginal, your marginal contribution to a, a, an ecosystem like ours should be paired with the marginal rewards you get out of it, right? Just to have a sustainable kind of equilibrium. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is absolutely critical. So if, if you think about this, does it make sense for, you know, a team of 50, you know, developers, engineers, you know, uh, designers and marketers, BD people and so forth, does it make sense for them to get a really small sliver of block reward and for the majority of block reward to go to um, you know, other parties? Um, I, I, don't, I don't believe so. Honestly, I, I think from my experience so far, I think it's absolutely critical for uh, people building on the ecosystem to have a non-trivial share of the block reward. And I, I think that the share that we get is very fair and very useful. And actually, we're just above water right now, but we're still catching up from when we were significantly below water um, you know, when we were at the 10% block reward. So even at 20% with the price for now, we're just, you know, barely above water in terms of our budget. 
Uh, in fact, we're, we're probably actually below and Horizon Labs is actually soaking up the losses. Really, so what's happening right now is we have Horizon Labs, which raised money, and that's a separate entity from Zen Blockchain Foundation. Um, so it, it is distinct, and the resources raised by Horizon Labs, uh, in some sense, are used uh, to soak up losses that we're taking on the foundation side when the price dips below our, our uh, break-even value. So right now, we're basically accumulating payables or receivables from the HL perspective. Um, so it's, it's good to have that capital, but still at 20% at current prices is, is not anything to brag about. Uh, so we're not buying Lambos or anything like that. We're trying to build a very complex, uh, you know, distributed network here. Um, so I, I don't think that I, I, I have no plans in the near future to you know, consider decreasing that. And I, I wouldn't even be able to justify it from a theoretical perspective. Right. So if I were to design a system from scratch, I probably wouldn't say 0% reward to people building on it. And I wouldn't say 10%, 20%. I might say something like 50%, but now we have no plans to increase it either. What I would like to do is actually decentralize decision-making and open this type of stuff up to a vote. And that's what the whole DAO system that we're building uh, is all about, is to be able to vote on these types of things. And then the node, the node holders would then decide the governance of the yeah. ecosystem. Not just node holders, but also anyone that owns Zen. So the, the, at least the prototype voting system that we have is one that's stake-weighted. Oh, okay. um, so. Yeah, I mean, node operators have a lot of stake, right? But still, they're not the only people with stake. So I do think that everyone participating in the ecosystem should have a say. And I'm really fascinated with like the radical markets type of uh, approach. If you've, if you've seen some of that stuff of like quadratic voting or radical voting where, you know, you, you try to have a rational weighting of, you know, yes, it's great. If you have skin in the game, you should have a say in how things are run. But you don't want the wealthiest people to just hijack the system. It basically, you know, um, do everything that benefits them and then all the other stakeholders are kind of left in the dust. That's not very sustainable either. So what quadratic voting does is it kind of tilts the balance back towards little people as well. And by, by little people, I don't mean to diminish people, but people with like small stake. Um, and so just a really simple example is if I have 100 Zen and I vote in a quadratic voting system, you take the square root of 100 and my vote counts 10 times. If I have one Zen, we take the square root of one, it's still one, and my vote counts one time. So instead of the rich person having a 100x, you know, say over me, they have a 10x say. So it's one way of kind of, you know, creating a more rational, yeah, balancing that. So I, I'm really a fan of that, but you really can't do it without some sort of way of making sure that I'm, I'm not pretending to be 10,000 people. Right, okay? that's so, true as well. Breaking yeah, so, the 10,000 wallets and... Exactly, so there's a technical challenge there. So it's not like we're bringing that to market right away, but we are, we, we do have a prototype for just stake weighted voting system. That's interesting. Now as an industry leader, that's what I'll call you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we already kind of touched on Donald Trump talking about it, Congress talking about it. Where do you see regulation moving forward? How do you see it globally or with the United States? I mean, I personally believe crypto is here to stay. I think totally. they're kind of being reactionary, uh, but I don't think there's going to be an all out ban, but I just kind of want your opinion on where we're at and uh, you know, why are they afraid of cryptocurrency and what kind of, hammer do you think they're going to bring down on the ecosystem uh, you know i i'm uh, i'm totally optimistic and maybe i'm optimistic where i want it to be a self-fulfilling prophecy um but I, I will also say you know the first part of my career was in military and working in military intelligence in in, in wars actually so i i get why the u.s government and other governments are skeptical and you know, can have a backlash on this stuff especially the privacy oriented stuff um you know no one wants isis to be using like your cryptocurrency that's a disaster and we don't ever want that we don't want uh you know violent cartels to be using cryptocurrency to you know increase their their capabilities so we we definitely at least from my perspective i want us to be responsible as an industry not to be callous about the potential downsides of it so regulators are obviously very focused on the downside what i really hope is that they don't overreact and kill the the innovation that this stuff can have so it has tremendous potential across every industry vertical and especially in social circumstances. So I, I hope that they take the time to do their due diligence, educate themselves. And that's our job as well on the industry side is we need to educate regulators and make sure that our politicians are making decisions that are actually good for us, um, good for the industry. Because I think this industry has enormous value, uh, enormous potential across the board. So I, I don't want to say it killed, but I think that we need to be responsible as well. I'm a big fan of self-regulating as well. Make sure that we're doing the right thing and not acting like idiots. Uh, you know, but let's self-police. Let's make sure that the scammers aren't dominating our industry. Let's make sure the serious projects are actually the ones that are you know, having our voices heard and are in the spotlight versus, you know, the, the scammers and the idiots who are taking advantage of people. Let's make sure that we call them out and make sure that we help 
protect users in our industry. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with you there. I just hope they don't, you know, stifle the, the innovation that's here, just like it tr kind of tried to stifle the internet innovation. You know, eventually we did get break through that barrier, things went fine. So I think the same will happen with cryptocurrencies. And I also do agree with calling out scammers or at least educating people fundamentally on how to start doing their own due diligence and research on various projects. Right. Make sure you're not, you're always never sending your private keys to anybody, et cetera. Cause those little things go a long way to really protecting your own wealth and protecting totally. your own usability of these cryptocurrencies. Totally. Totally. That's about all I got. Any last words, Rob? Nick, it's always fun. No, I really appreciate it. And I, I do also encourage people to come back, look at our previous interviews because they, they were also similarly uh, enlightening for me as well. Uh, and, you know, anyone that's interested in our project, please check it out. This is how you spell it. Try Zen. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Simple Zen. Like everything. Come join our social media. I'm, not, I'm personally trying to do a better job engaging with the community. Come join our Telegram channel. Join our Discord. Let's have a chat. Yeah, we'll send them on over there. That's cool. all we got, guys. So until next time, stay tuned for your daily updates on Learn Crypto. Our daily updates right here at Learn Crypto. And uh, hit that like and subscribe button. Peace out. Cool. Thanks, Nick.